is me on the inside, foot on the outside. That way I can actually come back if I fail. Good. Great. Then we went over grapevines and side scissors. Okay. Yeah. Graping out, it's just leg and foot control and so is side scissors. Anytime his butt is off his heels, he can get great. Now, when he's in my guard, he's got three directions he's going to move to beat whatever I'm doing. He's going to either stack forward, he's going to posture, or he's going to move backwards and duck out. All, any one of those three directions will beat, depending on what I'm doing, the right tool for the drop. So let's say if I had both feet on his hips, I have both feet on his hips. If he drives forward, I'm going to be able to tear him up. But if he moves backwards, I, he's going to leave. So that's the problem. So I have to, basic time he's playing me, I have to use the right tool for the job. The grapevines will kind of smash all three directions temporarily. And that gives me a lot of advantage. So I can break his posture down, I can prevent the stack, I can move, stop him from moving backwards, just my legs. And that's the advantage of it single dick grapevines or double. So if I'm working my guard here, as soon as I feel his butt come off his hips, his heels, he's vulnerable. So now I drop and now I don't want this space, I pinch. Flex my feet, don't stretch forward but rather lift up and out. From here, up and out. Boom. And lock. Now I can hold this position and now I can try to trap him. Or if he slips and leans to this side, I can start now, look for the elevator, sweep him over, or I can keep grappling, or just, just use it to break him down so now at least I have his head and I can try to work, okay? If he's postured all the way up, all the way up, and he's here, I can use the great lines to break him down. So he's here, I go lace, and then I'm gonna break him down to me. Boop. So I broke him down with my lace. And that way I can use my hands to protect my head. Okay. The other thing we talked about was the side scissor. Now the side scissor is so only going to stop forward motion. If he moves backwards, it's not going to help at all. So if I was here and he moves forward, I can sweep him. But if he doesn't come forward or he stays, starts moving backwards, now this is, means I'm only stopping one direction. But if all he's doing is trying to charge me down, it's going to work it's gonna look great. And the advantage we have now is to making him predictable in MMA is that most likely he's gonna to try to hit me in the face. Okay, so let's say he's in my closed guard. Once again, he's doing something right. He's got his hands on my biceps. He's playing me smart. And I just can't trap him. I wanna get his arm on the mat so I can lock the shoulder pin or rubber guard or whatever you wanna do. And I can't do it. So what does he do? He starts to duck out. When he does, I come here to protect my head. Now, right now I have no sweep, but he's gonna try to tag me. As soon as I feel weight on that leg, I don't have to see him. He keeps forward, keep coming, I feel it now. Hack. And now I'm coming up from my top position. Even if I just hack him quickly to get his hand, the post on the mat, at least now I can win the hand fight, which we talked about stuff in the guard pass. I can grab his wrist and get in the fight. Mm -hmm. So I'm just trying to protect my skull. And of course now if he has my hips and he's tight and I can't go to side scissor because he's driving this direction, side scissor, he's up and that's my HK control. And how I feel that is, you can see he moved backwards, so he creates space for me. Now if he's in, and now he doesn't move backwards, he moves up and he drives his hip forward. So just like keep it balanced all the way up and keep the hips forward. Here, it's going to be hard for me to go, I can't even lock grapevine. See how he's got this pressure in my hamstrings? If I try to fight him like this, I'm probably gonna get my chin is up. And he's free. So I gotta get my hips free. I hook. Now he tries to hit me. I'm in the fight. Okay? So I use K control. Mm -hmm. I use the right tool for the job. Okay? Just to demonstrate too, what I'm always really looking for is the shoulder pin series. The shoulder pin series is to create that hover where we talked about him being the 45 by forcing him, not by him making a mistake. For me to do that, I need to have an anchor, which will be his arm on the mat. So if I have his elbow on the mat. So when I feel this, I have an anchor. So what I like to do, and there's a lot of ways into it, and there's rules, there's one hip versus the other, okay? When he's here, 
I lock, get my foot on the hip, and then I'm gonna roll and get this under his chest. Here. And using a three-finger grip, which is very important. Three-finger grip allows me to do two directions. Now, I, he can't leave, he can't stack, he can't posture, he can't go three directions. I stalled him out. Now, I use this into his chest, lift. Now, see how he's, he's got all that weight off my leg, he can't hug me, and now I start to pinch. Now, my arm bar, our triangle, and once again, depending on how he's playing me. Okay. If I can't get on the outside of his arm, because he's playing me, then I get on the inside of his arm. You see how my knee's on the inside? Yeah. And now from here, I can start to work. Upper grip, boom, and fight. So depending on how he's playing me, that's what I'm gonna have to do. Okay. Did I do the, yeah, I did do the pick in the back. Yeah. So we're starting to get into some of the traps. Now, I'll just add one more thing. Mm -hmm. Down. Rubber guard works great. The problem with rubber guard, unless you're able to lock, I, in my opinion, what, what, uh, what Eddie calls the crackhead control, mm -hmm. and he comes here, which is kind of like the shoulder pin. Mm -hmm. He's creating this. I think it's hard because of the fact that guys will duck out of rubber guard, unless you wear key pants, or they'll stack in, yeah. in my opinion. Now, what I like about the shoulder pin, this, and I know some people have tried it and not liked it, it's because they're just hugging. They're not doing the three finger grip, him and up. Mm -hmm. They're not creating this pressure. They're just hugging. And if I just hug him, he's gonna be fine. Yeah. I'm making him hover, and that's what makes him hover. Okay. My fear in MMA is I'm not worried about the posture. I, I think that's overrated because I can go K control. I'm worried about the duck out. If he's got his hands here, when he moves out and ducks out, he's gonna slap his hips forward and he's gonna throw and it's gonna be a powerful punch. And this is, if you look, if you watch tape, you'll see that's when guys get stunned. They don't get stunned just someone going like this. They get stunned with someone snapping their body into it like Fedor. That is my fear. With, when I teach guys how to beat the rubber guard, even as good guys like Sean Bollinger or great rubber guard players, I tell them to duck out. Now, it, well, I've seen guys do it to him, and, and it works. And he's, a, he's one of the better guys I've seen at the mm -hmm. So my concern always with rubber guard is worrying about the duck out. That's why I like the shoulder pin. So I'd rather get controlled a little bit and stalled than have someone duck out and hit me. And that's why if you watch great, great rubber guard players, they don't ever sit in it. They move so quick that they don't stall with it because they know guys can duck out. And I'm sure guys are out there already figuring out counters how to stop the duck out. But that's what I'd really like to see from rubber guard players is show me how you're stopping the duck out because that's what I really want to see guys do. And I'm not a master of that. Now, what I don't like the rubber guard, the thing I don't like, I do use it, but the thing I don't like about it is when I'm here, I want, I need to fight this hand and I don't have this, I only have this hand to fight it. So there's something I call the cuff and that's what I like to use instead. And what I do here, a lot of times I set up off this cross grip and I come here and then I lock this. Now, you see how my shoulders on his face are nice and tight. Now, once again, I do have to worry about the duck out of course, but now this hand is free to fight. So now I can fight mirror grip and I still, I actually have a choke in place. So when I'm here, I like this a little better than a rubber guard. It's called, I call it the cuff. Mm -hmm. I come here, and I cross face him into this choke. Now from here, this is a choke, okay? And what he's gonna try to do, he's gonna try to take pressure off his neck by using his free hand. And when he starts to do that, now I can start to climb up for a reverse triangle, or what I call a bottle opener. This choke right here will work, or I switch. And this is one of the worst chokes I know. Okay, it's like, uh, Terrible guillotine. Only reason why I'm showing you that is if you're having a problem, because you're gonna go back to your gym and just gonna show this tape to other people. <laughs> There's gonna be guys that are crazy flexible there. My attitude is you don't have to grapple like me. I don't, a lot of guys that I've trained grapple nothing like me. Randy's totally different grapple. Okay, but he's still a black belt on me because he knows all the concept. He knows what I'm doing. He just has different specialties. He's a top game player. He's focused the game around a side choke, mount guillotines, and hand arm chokes, and a lot of turtle, because that's his style. If you're a flexible guy, and rubber guard is working for you 50% of the time, 
stop and think why it's failing, okay? When is it succeeding? And troubleshoot it, but don't get over creative where you're not taking the fact in that if I'm fighting somebody tough compared to somebody Anybody can look good being up on the scrub, but when you go against tough guys, it's really the basics that work. So if you're struggling with rubber guard, or whatever guard system, anything, anything, try to troubleshoot and find out why. Look at the concepts and fix it. And then when you fix it, share it. Because when you share it, somebody is going to counter it, tweak it, and then you'll get it back. And all you're going to do is make it better. Don't quit on it. Because you need to find the limitations of your technique. And that's what I figured out with my guard systems was, I would have one system that I'm sure I'd like to do all the time. But if he's playing me right, and all I think about is that one system, I, I'm going to be, it's a crapshoot. He's going to be just not at it. I have to have the discipline to switch because he's doing something right, and then I need him. And that's, that's kind of what we went through. We didn't do any entrapping systems. Okay. But I went over a lot of the, how to beat the hand fight and some of the open guard stuff because the first problem you're going to have is you're going to spend all day trying to trap this guy. And if he's a good hand fighter, you're not going to be able to trap him. Mm -hmm. he's going to be, it's, you might trap him once, and after that, he's going to stall the crap at you. So you've got to work the open systems. You've got to get it. And I'm glad we did the leg foot control. I think focus on the grapevines on the side scissor and just the K control sweeps. I think if you just focus on that, everything will just kind of come into place. Don't worry about this. Okay? Yeah.